to talk about this strange thing that appeared in our uh, report about repatriation. What do you think about it? When clients express a frustration or a desire to move away from their current, current you know, cloud provider, it's not so much, I think, a statement about repatriation. It's more a statement about their current journey has perhaps failed or not been as successful. Your client, for example, you met today, 500% mm. cost increase as a result of lifting, to shift, lift, lifting and shifting to cloud. That might give rise to an internal conversation inside that client where someone might be saying, why did we bother? Why did we bother coming to cloud? We could have stayed where we were. It, it, it is very clear. And I think there is another element. It wasn't very prominent in, into, into the report. I would expect the security would come out. But I think this repatriation is actually linked quite a bit with data residency, GDPR, mm. governance and compliance and controls, um, the cybersecurity attacks. It's very strange because you cannot really pinpoint cloud as an unsecured environment. It is a combination of environment mm. that creates vulnerability for people to take advantage of data breaches. Another aspect to this kind of repatriation theme is clients demand inherent portability yes. today. We talk about clients preferring what we would call a re-platforming mm. journey, containerization, right? Yes. The, the benefit, the inherent benefit behind that transformational journey is I can move my workloads wherever I prefer to move them to. And I think another theme of the repatriation conversation is I believe I've got freedom of movement. I might choose to exercise that in future or not. I, and I think that's mm. a very important mm. point is I, I think that puts the mm. spotlight on the fact is that the asset move, the application move to the cloud. Whatever cloud that is, with the most efficient and um, most innovative way mm. possible. Now, the relationship within the cloud providers and the enterprises is evolving over time. Another uh, example that we see quite a lot is this multi-cloud mm. presence. There are, in our 150 clients, there is probably 80% of them, they have two clouds. Some of them are gonna have three clouds. So this ability to use the best cloud for the best business, for the best innovating environment, it is very present. And you know, with the advent of, mm. of Gen AI, it is mm. even more uh, clear. So f to finish repatriations, mm. I don't think that clients are gonna move back and buy a ton of data center. That's not gonna mm. happen. I think what's gonna happen, they build the architecture on edge and you know, private mm. clouds and, and surround their public cloud deployment in the data center of the cloud of Equinix or whoever, with this um, edge architecture where their data can be protected or can be deployed in a um, in country where you know the data legislation require that. So I, I don't think that we have to expect that everybody's going to buy data center. I think that people are going to be a lot more conscious mm -hmm. on how the data relationship with the applications. And um, as well, you know, if I buy the hardware, I can depreciate that. And I've got, instead of having a full mm. OPEX that is very expensive, I can, you know, have a mixed OPEX CAPEX that is better for the financial yeah, and cloud. I think another thing that helps this kind of movement towards the edge, of course, is the, in, the inherent portability of these cloud native technologies. Clients have realized that if they design solutions appropriately, mm -hmm. those solutions are inherently portable to whatever hybrid multi-cloud environment they, they wish. And Edge is exactly the same. It shares the same technology underpinnings and clients have just realized how simple it can be to push process into the Edge without necessarily having to rip up your application and start again. Mm -hmm.